What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to the weekly Touchdowns to Home Runs SEC Pick Show. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Guys, if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. Comment anything, like the video, because we put out these videos weekly of our SEC picks, and we love college football on this channel. We love the SEC on this channel. I'm a big Gamecocks fan, but I'm also a big SEC fan. I talk about all the teams, so if you love the SEC as much as I do, definitely do not be afraid and go hit that sub button down below. We're back for another week of SEC football. Last week was technically rivalry week. We had some of the good games in there, like we had Auburn, Alabama, we had Texas A&M, LSU, and we had kind of some of those makeshift rivalries that we had to put up. Oh, we also had the Egg Bowl. I forgot about that one. I actually watched that game. That was a pretty good finish to that game. Um, then we have the makeshift rivalries in South Carolina, Georgia, because Georgia couldn't play Georgia Tech and South Carolina couldn't play Clemson. Then you had Florida, Kentucky, because Florida couldn't play Florida State. Kentucky couldn't play Louisville. And then you had, it was supposed to be, this was Arkansas was supposed to play Missouri this week, but that got flipped around. A lot of things got changed because I made a video. I made this same video. I make these videos every Sunday and then I post them out on Monday now. So originally I'd made a video talking about Arkansas, Missouri, and then that game got canceled and it got changed into Missouri and Vanderbilt. So I don't know why that all happened, but we're back with another, this is another makeshift week. A lot of games have changed here. A lot of games have just been thrown together at the last minute, and I'm pretty much a fan of what the SEC has done here because I do like that the games that we're having this week. So let's get into them, shall we not? Sticking with our topic of Arkansas and Missouri. I just talked about them. I was just talking about them. They play this weekend. Now, all the times are TBD right now. Um, at this point in time where I'm filming this video, except for the Alabama LSU game, that game is at eight o'clock. All the rest of them are TBD and even the network is TBD. So I don't know when these games are, when they're going to be played, but we are going to have Arkansas versus Missouri this week, Missouri coming off the big win against Vanderbilt. Obviously Vanderbilt isn't a really good team. Vanderbilt couldn't even get in field goal range for Sarah Fuller to get in and kick a field goal. They had to put her in to kick the squib kick to open the half, I'm pretty sure, which was great to see her get in the game. Obviously, there's so much hype around that that she was going to suit up for the Commodores. It was good that she actually got to get into the game. It was great to see that. Um, Missouri's a good football team, especially defensively. I think it really showed in that game, especially against a weaker offensive team in Vanderbilt. Missouri has a really good defense. I've watched them. We just they just played the game across a couple weeks ago, and their defense is really really good. Nick Bolton's one of the best players in all of the SEC. He's been playing lights out so far this year. I didn't really get to. I don't really have that much exposure to Missouri because they don't. I usually watch the big time games, the prime time games. I usually watch all the CBS games, the ESPN night games. If South Carolina's not playing, I watch some of the noon games and those games on ESPN and CBS. Missouri's usually not in those ones. So I think they're a team that have really slipped under the radar this season because they're four and three in the SEC this year. Like they're not a bad team at all. They're actually a pretty good football team. They just don't get the limelight that so many other teams. Like obviously you're going to have Alabama up there. You're going to have the teams like Georgia, Florida, Texas A&M. You're going to have the teams with the names Auburn, LSU, always get those primetime games just because of their name. Missouri is a team that definitely deserves some more spotlight because they are actually a really good football team this year. Arkansas, on the other hand, definitely the most surprising team in the SEC. I actually really like this matchup. This is going to be a very interesting game. Arkansas goes out this year. I picked them to be dead last in the SEC West. No question about it. Same with so many people. Um, so many people picked Arkansas to come dead last in the SEC this year. Arkansas is a really good football team this year. Sam Pittman has gone in and changed this program around like they are actually playing some pretty good football out there Felipe Franks has thrown 17 touchdowns for four interceptions he's having a pretty decent year after transferring from Florida obviously Arkansas it has lost some games that they should lose to like they lost the game to Florida they lost the game to who else have they played the Auburn game is probably their most controversial one because we all know the Bo Nix backwards spike that's technically a fumble that should have been Arkansas's ball and then literally like right after that Auburn goes out and kicks a game-winning field goal. So technically Arkansas should be 4 and 4 and Missouri's 4 and 3. So this is a very close game. This is the battle line rivalry. Like both of these teams 
play like it, it's a border like the states border each other so it's going to be interesting there's a rivalry there a recruiting battle because i bet you these guys go into each other's states and try to recruit like crazy a bunch of these players might have played in high school together so lots of very interesting things of this football game to be talked about Baslick as the quarterback for missouri he's had a decent year although like there's so many quarterbacks i feel like as a quarterback in the SEC, your stats, like your touchdown interception ratio is actually crazy high or is super low. Like Baselick has thrown five touchdowns for two interceptions and Felipe Franks has thrown 17 for four. There's some teams that are just throwing touchdowns left, right and center, like Ole Miss, Alabama, Florida. And you got teams like South Carolina, Missouri, Vanderbilt, who just don't throw touchdowns that often. Like it is what it is. Uh, let's take a look at some of the team breakdowns of this one. Arkansas scores an average of 25.8 points, while Missouri scores 24.4. Arkansas allows 30.9 points, while Missouri only allows 25. So you could see there that the stats are very, very close in how this game is played. Rushing is going to be big in this game. We'll see who is able to get. Uh, whoever seems to have the most rushing yards in a lot of SEC games this year usually comes out as the winner. This game is a Missouri I say this all the time. Yes, there's no fans in the stadium, but constantly it has favored that the home team is going to win if it's a toss-up game like this. That's just what's been going on in college football this year, especially in the SEC for these toss-up games. It's not just the fans that when you get a home game, you feel better about. You get to wake up in the same bed as you normally do. You're familiar with everything. It's same training facility, same all that. You don't have to travel. There's not that late night travel the night before to get to the city that you're playing in. So this game is in Como. Although I really like Arkansas this year. I've Arkansas has become one of my favorite teams in the SEC. I was a big fan of them. I'd say that they were probably my fourth favorite team in the SEC before this season. I think they might have jumped up to like third or something. I really like this Arkansas football team. I feel like their defense is going to step up in this game. Missouri's offense isn't anything special. We all know that. Missouri doesn't put up the scoreboard. They don't run up the scoreboard as much as other teams do. So as long as Arkansas does the things, Felipe Franks gets the ball downfield, get the ball in the hands of Burks because he is the leading receiver for Arkansas. And I'm pretty sure he's like fifth in the SEC right now in receiving. He's had a really good year, 598 yards, six touchdowns, 39 receptions. Get the ball in your the hands of your playmakers. And this Arkansas team has been all over on defense. I'm pretty sure there's a ton of them that are leading on tackles right now. Like, look at this. You got Morgan, Catalan, and Poole all leading in tackles. That is one, two, and four in leading tackles in the SEC. This is a team that lays a wood on you. They're going to hit you, and they're going to hit you hard. So I really like where this Arkansas team is at this year. Even though I've been talking nonstop about how good Missouri's defense is and everything. I just don't feel like Missouri has the offense right now to be able to. You saw it against South Carolina. A very weak South Carolina defense went up against Missouri's offense in the second half of that South Carolina game. Missouri got shut out by our defense. Like, they couldn't get anything going on the ground. Roundtree had a really tough game. Couldn't get anything going there. Receiving-wise, they, like, they have Batty. They have Knox. They have Chisholm. They have all these guys, but... You need someone to go out there and just have a hundred plus, a hundred fifty yard game, something like that, to be able to be competitive. You're gonna need someone to step up big in this game if you're Missouri on offense, in my opinion. And I just don't see that. So in this game, I am going to take the Razorbacks. I just feel really good about where they're at as a program right now, where they're headed, and them in this game, I feel really good about. So I am taking Arkansas in this one. Next up. We got my Gamecocks taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. Now let's recap Kentucky first for you. Kentucky went out against Florida this weekend. I covered this game. I watched this game. I did a post game on it because I just picked some random games uh, each week to just cover a post game on. Kentucky went out. They lost 34 to 10 against Florida. Obviously, Florida is the number six team in the country for a reason. That offense is absolutely lethal, and it kind of showed Kentucky's defense. Although that game was very close in the first half, like don't get me wrong, first quarter and everything, very close game. I'm pretty sure Kentucky was up 10 to seven for a good point of that game, and it was until Kentucky decided to kick to Kadarius Tony 
till everything kind of went downhill. I don't know why you do that. He's one of the most explosive players in all the SEC. So that was a mistake. And Kentucky definitely learned their lesson on that one. Terry Wilson had a very, very bad game. Like he had a really, really rough game against Florida. He threw for a couple of interceptions. Florida was just playing good defense all day that game. Like you hold Kentucky to 10 points. I know Kentucky's a weak offensive team, but you hold them to 10 points. Florida's defense was on that day. They got to do better. Like their defense, Kentucky has a good defense. Like I haven't really watched Kentucky this year. As again, I talked about this when I was talking about Missouri. They're a team that don't really get that those spotlight games. They don't get the CBS games. They don't get the ESPN noon games or whatever. They don't get blah, 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 blah. So I don't really watch them as much. I usually watch, if I'm watching SEC football that's not South Carolina, it's going to be those primetime games. Sometimes a team that I have really been watching this year is Ole Miss. I turn them on for a good point. Of, I, I think the only Kentucky game that I watched this year so far was the Ole Miss-Kentucky game, and I think that was week week two of SEC football, something like that. And I remember Ole Miss winning in overtime. So I haven't really seen Kentucky enough. I see the analysis on them all the time. Very good defense. They're very strong defensively. I watched the game this weekend. Offense was obviously a huge, huge struggle. Terry Wilson needs to play a lot better. They got their leading receiver is Ali. He had a decent game yesterday. Wasn't anything to write home about, but like this whole Kentucky offense as a whole, they just got to have a ton of more guys to step up in this game to be able to compete. South Carolina and Kentucky, these are two struggling teams right now. Let's dive into South Carolina's game that they played yesterday, last night. I'm filming this on a Sunday, if you didn't know. Um, South Carolina goes out. Luke Doty's the starting quarterback. They are so injured. Injuries on both sides of the ball, opt-outs. They, they were playing with a whole different team, but we had guys who went out there and played their hearts out, so I cannot complain at all. I'll always take 22 guys that are good, willing to go out there and play their hearts out rather than 22 guys that are just going to go out there and go through the motions and everything. Even though if those players are better, it's more exciting when the players, it's more enjoyable to watch when the players, you actually feel the energy and feel the enthusiasm from them on the field. Luke Doty got the start for the Gamecocks. Offense is really beat up. We are missing Shy Smith, obviously our leading receiver. He was out due to injury. Defensive wise, we are so like we know Izzy dropped out. Izzy McQuamu. We had J.C. Horn drop out. R.J. Roderick dropped out. Um, Kinsley and Akbari was hurt at that game. Jordan Birch was hurt before that game. Ernest Jones got hurt during that game. It was just injuries all over the place. But we were still able. It was in our defense had a really rough start at the beginning. Towards the second quarter, beginning of the third quarter, we kind of picked it up, but then it wasn't enough to be able to hold Georgia to anything that could have put our offense in a position to score points and win. Luke Doty goes out there offensive-wise. Obviously, he's missing his top receiver. Nick Muse, he was able to take advantage of him really well. He caught for 131 touchdowns and then was able to uh, – not 131 touchdowns. What am I talking about? 131 yards and one touchdown in this game. Imagine catching for 131 touchdowns in one game. That's <laughs> – that would be something special. <laughs> Speaking of which, Buffalo's running back yesterday ran for eight touchdowns and like 400-something yards. That's just what happens in the MAC. You got some action going on there. They, he had a really good game. Eight rushing touchdowns. I'm pretty sure that's a college football record. I remember Arizona State's quarterback a couple of years ago went for seven touchdowns, and that was like the college football record or something. So he might have beat that. I'm not too sure about that. But Buffalo's running back eight touchdowns. Obviously not Nick Muse's number of 131 touchdowns in my in my case, but it is what it is. South Carolina, Luke Doughty goes out there. Obviously, we know him for his feet. He's really good at scrambling making his own plays and everything but throwing the ball yesterday he was 18 for 22 I'm pretty sure and threw for 190 yards Luke Doty is starting to progress into a throwing QB obviously the game against Missouri his arm was very very weak he had some pretty bad throws he aired a couple out deep that just did not they were airmail didn't even come close in this game he actually was hitting his throws 18 for 22 very very good number he hit one deep ball that was really good. It was a double reverse flea flicker. Um, he hit, who was it? I'm pretty sure it was Josh Van or Jalen Brooks, someone out there, or Nick Music. I can't even remember. The game feels so long ago, even though it was just last night, because we lost. Kevin Harris, 
best running back. I, I want to say best running back in the SEC, although I know it's Najee Harris. He's the best running back in college football, in my opinion. But Kevin Harris still leads the Gamecocks. He still leads the SEC in rushing this year. He has 900. How much does he have? 928 yards. He's 72 yards away from getting 1,000 this season. In a season where we have Marshawn Lloyd uh, go out due to injury, I thought our rushing game was screwed. Like, But our offensive line in the rushing game has played very well. And Kevin Harris has just stepped up immensely. Holy crap. He, I doubted him this year. I'm not even going to sit up here and be like, oh, I knew that Kevin Harris was going to be good this season. Y'all just had to give him the chance. I didn't think that. I think because we only saw him last year against like Charleston Southern and those other teams. I think who else did we play last year that uh, after, I don't can't remember if he played a lot during App State. But there are a couple of games where we got to see some of him. But I was just like, I don't think he's going to be able to put up these numbers. I doubted him. And boy, has he proved me wrong. And I could not be happier that he proved me wrong. Because number 20 for the Gamecocks is an absolute bust. He goes out there and he'd run guys over. Like, I would not want to get in front of him if I'm try if I'm a linebacker or cornerback. He's going to run you over. He is a really good running back. Lots of good things from Kevin Harris. And right under him is the other Harris, Najee Harris, for 193 yards rushing in the season. Gamecocks, what are they playing for this season? What are either of these teams playing for this season? Because both of these teams are struggling. <laughs> Kentucky's 3-6, and six, South Carolina's 2-7. and seven. You really don't have anything to play for in this game other than your dignity and your sense of pride or whatever that I'm going to go out and play this game as hard as I can because I don't see either of these teams making a bowl game even though that every single team is eligible for a bowl game this year. Points allowed. Carolina gives up 35 points a game. Kentucky gives up 27. Carolina scores 24 points a game. Kentucky only scores 19. Obviously, I said Kentucky's offense is a huge weakness. In the SEC this year, you got you've learned that you have to put up a lot of points to compete with teams. And 19.6 points just ain't gonna do it. This is a very this game is in Lexington. I talked about it at the game before. These toss-up games have always favored the home team. This year, even though that there's not really any fans in the stadium, I know Kentucky has some in there. It's it's tough because I'm a Gamecocks fan. I want to cheer for the Gamecocks. I want to pick them in this game. I think I honestly feel like I am going to pick them in this game because I just feel like we're playing with some sort of energy right now. I feel like Luke Doty has brought some kind of energy to this locker room that has been contagious where you just have a ton of guys going out there and playing their absolute hearts out in this game. So... I'm really liking where South Carolina's at, even though their defense is really beat up. You're going up against a weaker offensive opponent. The offense has been rolling the last couple games, even though that the points haven't showed it. We've seen a lot of bright spots in the rushing game, in the passing game, and at quarterback with Luke Doty. I think that the Gamecocks are going to go into Lexington. Mike Bobo's going to be like, boys, let's just go out there. Let's win our last game of the season. It's going to be some guy's last game that as ever as a Gamecock. You're going to have Sidarius Hutcherson. It's going to be his last game. Uh, Nick Muse's last game as a Gamecock. Parker White's last game as a Gamecock. I'm guessing Shy's not playing, so that's unfortunate because I'd love to see him one more time in the Garden in Black. But I am going to take Carolina in this game. I feel like there's just a sense of excitement in this locker room, and they're going to want to push out to go more and get this win against Kentucky. So give me the Gamecocks in this one. Next up, we have a very interesting game here. This is a game that's going to be crucial in the playoff race because this is easily a trap game for this team. Texas A&M goes to Auburn, Alabama to take on the Tigers. Texas A&M goes out. I think that game against LSU, they beat LSU yesterday, but the final score was only 20-7. to I think that that's more of a knock to Texas A&M in that game than it is to LSU, who actually lost the game because... When you're a team fighting for a playoff spot, especially when there's so much going on, if Notre Dame or Clemson drops another game, I thought Notre Dame was going to drop that game to North Carolina this week. Notre Dame, I feel like they could drop a game. If they drop one, Texas A&M, you're a team that's going to have to start running up the scoreboard because you're going to be going up against Cincinnati, BYU. Uh, you're going to be going up against... Uh, who else? I want to say Northwestern just lost to Michigan State so that kind of tosses up everything in that scenario because it was looking like Ohio State and Northwestern were going to go undefeated into the Big Ten Championship I've heard that 
Ohio State might not even play in the Big Ten championship this year because of lack of games. They only play in like six games this season because a ton have been gone due to COVID. Uh, they might even play five games, and there's a certain minimum that you have to meet to play in the Big Ten championship. So Texas A&M really has to impress the committee with their scores and everything because it's going to come down to the wire. This playoff race this year is going to be very interesting, especially if you have a team like Notre Dame or Clemson drop another game. You're going to have some you're going to have a team, an SEC two team. You're going to have a group of five team. You're going to have a Big Ten two team. The Pac-12 and Big 12, in my opinion, are out. Oregon loses this weekend to uh, Oregon State. I'm happy about that. I'm not a big Pac-12 guy at all. The only other team, USC's in the mix. People are like, oh, they got it. I think ESPN has them at like a 14% chance of making the playoff this year. And then there's like Washington at a 1% chance. Oklahoma State, they've they lost two games. I don't see them making the playoff. I was like, they're the only team, in my opinion, that's going to make the playoff out of the Big 12 because you had Texas and, um, Texas and Oklahoma lose two big games uh, early on in the season that pretty much screwed up their resume and screwed up Oklahoma State because even if Oklahoma State won those games, yes, they would have been undefeated, but it wouldn't have been against good quality teams because Oklahoma and Texas have been very weak this year. I'm pretty sure like Iowa State's up there in the Big 12 championship right now. They're a team, after losing the first game of the season, to I remember watching that game. It was to Louisiana Lafayette. Oh, Iowa State lost the first game. They've come back and they've played some pretty good football. So back to this Texas A&M-Auburn game because this is a playoff race game. That was what I was going into there. That was what I was touching on because this game is going to be crucial for the playoff. Texas A&M, if you want to prove that you are a playoff-ready team, this is a game. Even though Auburn's probably going to be unranked because they go out and lose to Alabama. Going into that game, I watched a bit of that game. I was flipping between that and the Egg Bowl. Auburn was the final score, 42-13. to Sarkeesian goes in as the acting head coach for Alabama. You knew what you were going to get from Alabama. You knew that this game was going to be high. Like, the spread going into this was 24. I didn't think that Auburn really had a chance in this one because Alabama is the best team in the nation for a reason. Their offense and defense were on last night. Mac Jones throwing for 302 yards, Harris rushing for 96, and Devontae catching for 171. They just got – they can toss, toss the ball up. Mac Jones could literally be blindfolded, toss the ball up anywhere on the field, and someone will go out and catch that ball. That's a really good football team. So I wasn't expecting Auburn. I was expecting it to be a bit closer because it was a rivalry game. But nonetheless, I expected Alabama to win in this one. Auburn got run over defensively and offensively. They just couldn't put up any numbers that, to compete with Alabama. Even though Auburn isn't going to be ranked in this game, I feel like this is a good game to prove to the committee that you are a good team, especially if you could run up the scoreboard against Auburn and hold them to minimal points. Texas A&M has a really good defense, and Auburn's offense has been very, very shaky this year. Like They're a team that you go from weeks like Let's say they lose to South Carolina. I think they put up like 23 points in that game. They smack LSU. They put up like 43 points in that game. They've had a lot of up and down games offensively where the Georgia game, they weren't able to do anything. I remember watching that early season showdown. They've been really inconsistent offensively. So if you could get them in a bad spot offensively, make Bo Nix, make some mistakes and everything, limit the rushing game. They got some good receivers over there in Auburn, so Texas A&M corners are going to have their work cut out for them. But if they're able to hold them to a minimal number on offense, that's going to look really good to the committee. And then also, you got to put up a lot of points. I feel like points scored are going to be the most key factor into going up into this playoff race because all the teams that are in the playoff race are right now are really elite offensive teams. They're teams that can run up the scoreboard. So if you're Texas A&M, you got to prove that you're one of those teams that can go out there and completely run up the scoreboard. This is a big game to prove to that committee that if something happens, if there's a shakeup, that Texas A&M can get into that college football playoff fourth spot and maybe play Alabama in what would that be? It would either be the Rose Bowl or the Sugar Bowl. Hopefully the Rose Bowl. I love watching SEC teams in the Rose Bowl. Obviously it's the best bowl in all of college football in my opinion even though it's out west in california it's still the most classic bowl um uh, what is texas a m texas a m just needs to keep doing what they're doing their offensive line has been absolutely amazing this game i think i've heard that they haven't let up a sack since like the vanderbilt game which was their first game of the season i've heard 
tons of different things in this game because I've heard they let up a sack in the Alabama game. I've heard that they let up a sack in the Vanderbilt game. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they let up a sack last night against LSU. They might have. They might not have. I didn't really watch the game. I was more focused on the South Carolina-Georgia game at that time. Texas A&M is putting up 31 points a game while Auburn is putting up 26 Texas A&M is only allowing 22.4 points, while Auburn is allowing 24.5. Total yards a game, Texas A&M 418, Auburn 395. So very close numbers here. Like, again, this is easily a trap game for Texas A&M. This is easily a game that Texas A&M could go out there and lose because Auburn is a good football team. Even though they've had their struggles this season, they've had their ups as well. Very inconsistent team, in my opinion. This team is a team that is either really hot, they're playing really well, or they're just not playing good at all. So hopefully Texas A&M can catch them at a bad time because I, even though I like Auburn a lot more than I do Texas A&M, I'm always going to be a guy who roots for SEC teams to be in the playoffs. I love when there's two SEC teams in the playoffs, no matter who they are. I just feel like it looks better on us as a conference, especially going up against the Big Ten uh, People think that the SEC isn't the best conference in all of college football. That makes me laugh, but it is what it is. I mean, yeah, sorry. I've been talking for a long time now. I just need to catch my breath, catch some water so I could keep talking to you guys. Rushing game, take Bigsby. Obviously have to get going in this one. I can't remember what he put up in the Alabama game yesterday or if he even played at all because, again, I was just flipping through that game. I did hear that he was dealing with some kind of injury in that game going up against, I think that was in the Tennessee game. He was dealing with injury in that one. So I'm just pulling up the box score here. Yeah, he rushed for 11 for 39. He's a guy that really sets that tone on offense for Auburn this season. I've really seen when he's able to get going, it seems like the rest of the offense plays a lot better. So if Auburn wants a chance in this game, definitely get the run game established with Bo Nix. Texas A&M just hold up the line. Auburn can get to the quarterback sometimes, so make sure you hold up that Auburn defensive line. If you bully them at the line of scrimmage, Texas A&M is going to be put in a really good position to score a lot of points in this game. So offensive line, if Texas A&M offensive line can keep playing well, that's going to be really good for them. Uh, what else does Texas A&M? Just hold them defensively force a couple turnovers in this game that will help Texas A&M get the ball back in their offensive hands and more, score more points and I've said it if you want to impress the college football committee you have to score a lot of points in this game you have to run up the scoreboard and win by a really good margin so I am going to take Texas A&M in this one I think they see the importance of the playoff in this game and I am going to take the Aggies because I do feel like they are the better team in this game Next up, we got another good one. Another one that's going to be crucial for the playoff race, the SEC championship race, even though it's pretty much a wrap between Florida and Alabama. It's not official yet. Even though I thought it was, I made a video of my post game against Kentucky this weekend. I put that Florida had won the East because I don't know where I heard that. I obviously got my information wrong. And when I thought back about it, I was like, wait, Florida does have two games left and Alabama does have two and all Florida needs to do is lose two games and then Georgia win out and then Georgia still gets that spot. So I don't know what I was thinking in that game because I was coming out after that post game and when I was talking about like, oh, Florida has gone out and they've officially won the East. They will play Alabama in the SEC championship. I apologize for that, Florida fans and all SEC fans because I obviously got my information wrong on that one. But Florida goes on to play in Tennessee this weekend, this is another trap game. Even though Tennessee has been playing a lot weaker this season, they are a team that had a lot of high hopes going into this game. They were ranked early on in the season. They've kind of taken a step back. They're two and five this season. But t Tennessee, especially that this game is in Tennessee and it's a rivalry game, Tennessee and Florida don't like each other. I had this game as being this was supposed to be played really early on in the season. Um, at the beginning with the regular schedule, I had this as a potential trap game for Florida, 100%. And I think it still is, even though that the record doesn't show it. Florida 7-1 and one, and Tennessee is 2-5. and five. Speaking of Florida fans, if you are a Florida fan, listen up because I have just dropped a bunch of new Gator merch because I designed this new logo all myself, this Gator head logo. I put a lot of time and effort into making this. So Gator fans, if you want to help me and support this channel and have something unique 
some new unique Florida Gators shirts. I have shirts with just and hoodies with just the logo on it. I have some that say we want Bama for when they make the SEC championship because they are going to, in my opinion. I have the East is ours shirt, and then I also have the Kyle for Heisman. Don't care which one. So definitely do not take it. Uh, be afraid to take advantage of those right now. Shirts are only fifteen bucks. Hoodies are thirty dollars. I don't want to run up the price for you guys on this channel. Like we got our own merch, and then I make some other like sports merch. I much prefer selling the items and seeing people wear it than running up the price and like ha making profit for myself. I take pride in people liking my designs and wanting to wear them. So I think that's what it's more about for me. That's why I only have these at 15 bucks. I don't want to, obviously I need to cover the production costs and everything and cover the cost of running the store, but I don't want to rip you guys off. So these are really good, high quality shirts, only 15 bucks. I just want to put out my designs and see you guys wear them. So definitely do not be afraid. Go hit the link in the description right now to get your those. Back to Florida, Tennessee. What can I say about Florida? That team offensively is absolutely insane. They get Kyle Pitts back last week against Kentucky, and he scores three touchdowns against uh, Kentucky's defense. Holy, he is a good player. That's why I made that Kyle for Heisman shirt and said don't care which one because – Yes, Kyle Trask is amazing. Yes, he's putting up, he's thrown 34 touchdowns and three interceptions this season. But you have to look at the tight end for Florida as well because he is just as good as Kyle Trask. Like those two Kyles are absolutely insane. Kyle Pitts is definitely going to go up there in the draft. I think that he's a lock in, I think he definitely needs to be a top 10 pick. I have a team like the Carolina Panthers circled all over him because they're a team that is in need of a tight end this isn't your average tight end this isn't a guy who's going to go out there and just block constantly and maybe pick up some big crucial third down plays this is going to be a go-to receiver for your team like I'm dead serious that's how good Kyle Pitts is he's going to be a go-to receiver for your team he's going to be like a George Kittle uh Travis Kelsey something like that although I do see Pitts as being more an ath of an athletic tight end than those guys in the fact of receiving wise He's going to go out there and he's going to run seams down the middle. He's going to go out there and make some athletic plays. Kyle Pitts is a guy that I absolutely love watching. And if he goes to the Panthers, I'm a bit of a Panthers fan. I think I might need a score of Kyle Pitts jersey because he is really good. Kyle Trask, on the other hand, I touched on it. 34 touchdowns, three interceptions. You're going up against a quarterback in Garantano who's thrown six touchdowns, four interceptions. You see a bit of a gap there. That just separates the elite SEC teams from the not elite SEC teams. The teams like Alabama, whose quarterbacks are thrown, like I think Mac Jones is at 23 touchdowns, four interceptions or something like that. The touchdown to interception ratio really shows where you're at as a team this year in the SEC. And it shows Tennessee is two and four. Their interception touchdown to interception ratio for their starting quarterback is six and four. Kyle Trask is 34-3, and three, leading college football in touchdowns this season. Kyle Trask is going to win the Heisman for a reason. I've already made my prediction. I made a video on if I think Kyle Trask will win the Heisman, and I do think he will still, unless something really bad happens, or unless Mac Jones or Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. I don't even think Justin Fields can win it due to the lack of games this season. But maybe Zach Wilson, BYU's quarterback, if something crazy happens, like... They go out there and throw a 10-touchdown game, even though that's literally impossible. Maybe you could see something happen. But in my opinion, Cal Trask is a lock for the Heisman right now. Pierce has had some good games rushing-wise for Florida. I've talked about the receivers for Florida. Kyle Pitts I touched on a lot. He's already had 11 touchdowns this season. But the big wide receiver, the big athletic wide receiver for Florida is Kadarius Toney. He's an athlete. He's going to make you miss. You saw him run the pump back against a team. Uh, in Kentucky this weekend I watched that game Florida was playing really well even defensively defensively is something that I think really impressed me for Florida because they were able to take the ball away from Kentucky a ton and Kentucky and Tennessee in my opinion are a team two teams that are very similar where the defense is uh, I don't know can I say that the defense Tennessee's defense is better than their offense I don't think I really can because I think that those it's a weakness on both sides of the ball for that team but what I'm trying to say here is Tennessee's offense is very very weak Garantano throws a lot of picks this Tennessee team in a total throws a lot of picks 
if Florida is able to take advantage of that like they were able to against Kentucky, that's going to look really good to the playoff committee. And maybe coming down, in my opinion, Florida wins out there in the playoff. If they lose to Alabama in the SEC championship, it's going to be really hard to put a two-loss team over, let's say, a one-loss Texas A&M or an undefeated group of five team or a one-loss ACC two, two team. It's going to be really tough. So if Florida wins out, in my opinion, they're in. If they lose one game, I think they're out, sadly. But they are going to make a New Year's Six Bowl, in my opinion. I know it's not what Florida fans are expecting. But, hey, I'm a South Carolina fan. If I make a New Year's Six Bowl, I'm happy. But obviously, that's not the expectation for Florida. Tennessee's struggled this season. We've I've said it all year long. They are not what they expected to be this season. Had lots of problems offensively. Defensively, they've been letting up 31 points a game offensively they've only been scoring 20 points a game when you're going up against a team in Florida that that averages 43.4 points a game you're going to need to put up some points offensively in this game you're going to have to hit Palmer for some big plays down the field you're going to have to get Eric Gray going in the rushing game I just don't see even though I do have this as a trap game even though I said that it's in Knoxville I'm feeling pretty decent that Tennessee could go up and make this a decent fight I don't think that'll be enough I've had this game close in the first half Expect it to be somewhat of like what the Kentucky game was a week ago where first quarter and everything, Kentucky was able to keep it close against Florida, but then you had the Kyle to Kyle connection show up. You had just plays and special teams with Kadarius Tony show up. The defense showed up for Florida. I have the Gators in this one, and I have them winning by a pretty big margin in the second half of the game. So give me the Gators 100% in this one. Uh, take a good drink before I start talking about this next game, and that is Vanderbilt versus Georgia. Georgia Bulldogs obviously go out and beat my South Carolina Gamecocks last week. It was all rushing game for Georgia. Like, yes, JT Daniels does go in. He threw for a couple of touchdowns and one interception, but it was the rushing game, hands down, that won the game for Georgia. You had, who was it? Cook ran for oh a hundred plus. Zamir White ran for a hundred plus, and you had like McIntyre run for a decent amount. You had a lot of guys run for a good chunk of yards, and I think they had like three hundred something yards on the ground in that game. That's why Georgia was able to come out with the win in that one. It was just way too much for South Carolina's defense to handle. And you're going up against the worst team in the SEC in this game, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's an zero and eight team. They're they they've been that that's the team that they've been playing all season long. Like. They haven't been anything special, although the only thing special, I don't want to say that Vanderbilt hasn't been special this season because they obviously had some groundbreaking news from last week when they put in Sarah Fuller. She suited up for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Now, the big question was going to be, is she going to play or not? It just shows how bad Vanderbilt is when their offense can't even get in position to let her kick a field goal. So I love the move to put her in to kick off the second half. I think it's great to see a girl playing in a power five game. It, it like no matter what you think about it, I think that even though I, this is a very controversial topic because obviously a lot of people are gonna say, oh, it, it safety wise and everything. But I like I like the decision to put her in. It's a great it's a great look for every it's a great look for girls who want to pursue a career in football and everything because I've there are a lot of girls in high school football and everything that play. And who's to say they can't play? If they're playing at the level, I have no problem if they're playing at the same level as all these other college athletes. If they want to go in there and play, let them play. If they're good enough to play, let them play. I have no problems with that. So, Sarah Fuller, congratulations to you. It's great to see you out there and get the kickoff in. But Vanderbilt's a bad team. Vanderbilt's a really bad football team. 0-8 in the SEC this year. And they're going up against the number nine Georgia Bulldogs right now. The AP will come out today. Then we'll have the playoff rankings come out on Tuesday. I don't know if Georgia Georgia will make a jump up because you had Northwestern lose. Did anyone else lose? Uh, I don't think anyone else lost in that top tier, that top 10 tier. So Georgia is going to make a jump up to number eight. Maybe they jump up a bit more. I don't know what happens. The playoff committee is all over the place. Putting BYU at 14, I think, in my opinion, was crazy. Putting Clemson above of Ohio State, in my opinion, was crazy. A lot of things that I think that is just... The playoff committee and me have a tough relationship. We don't get along very well. Uh, Georgia, 
Very good football team. Vanderbilt, not very good football team. I don't need to explain that much in this game. JT Daniels, I think this is a game where he goes out and throws four touchdowns. I don't think he throws a pick. Vanderbilt's defense and offense has been very weak of late. Kenny Seals is the quarterback for Vanderbilt. He's got to take advantage of his receivers and his running game and everything. Henry Brooks is their leading rusher. He's rushed for 438 uh, yards this season, two touchdowns. Johnson's the leading receiver, 481 yards, two touchdowns. Ab Abdur Rahman has 337 yards, one touchdown. I'm almost at a loss of breath. I've been talking for a long time. How long have I been talking for here? These videos take a long time to film, so if you appreciate me taking the time and everything to put it together, these deep analysis and everything, definitely drop a sub, a like, a comment. Do whatever you got to do in the comment section down below. I'd really appreciate it. Again, I have Georgia in this game. I'm not even going to go out and try to beat around the bush and say Vanderbilt has a chance in this game. Georgia's going to win this football game. 99.9% .9 sure of it. JT Daniels comes in. He's looking like a real good quarterback in the SEC now, although it is a bit too late because Georgia can't win the SEC East anymore unless Florida drops their next two games to Tennessee and then to LSU and Georgia wins out against Vandy. And then I can't remember who does Georgia play after Vandy the next week because it's another one of those makeup games. Oh, no, Georgia's done after this week. My bad. Um, I thought Georgia got a game canceled or something like that, but this is the last game. According to this schedule, which <laughs> there's been so many different schedules go around, I've had tons of mistakes in the schedule game because there's just been games getting postponed and everything left, right, and center. So who knows? Even I could go on Instagram right now and scroll and learn that the Florida to Tennessee or Alabama LSU or Texas A&M Auburn game has just been canceled. I hope not because I love watching SEC games get played out. But Georgia's going to win this game. Georgia has a good defense. Georgia has a good offense. And Vanderbilt is bad on both sides of the ball. Give me the Bulldogs in this one. Hands down, I got the Bulldogs winning in this one. That brings us to our final games, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the revenge game. Look at that jersey behind me. I hate to do this to Alabama fans. I'm not even really an LSU fan. I just have the jersey because I was a big fan of that team last year, the 2019 LSU Get a uh, team very very good team I'm a big Joe Burrow fan I love that he transferred and he just a guy that came out of nowhere came from Athens County Ohio and was just able to become something phenomenal had one of the best even uh, if not the best season a quarterback has ever had in college football love Joe Burrow LSU versus Alabama is back the game got canceled a couple weeks ago i Posted my pred prediction for this two weeks ago because I thought it was happening. Game got canceled. But this game, this is the only game right now when I'm filming this video that is scheduled 8 o'clock on CBS. We're going to have a night game in Death Valley. I know it's nowhere near the excitement of what we had last year. We had two versus three going into Alabama. But this is still a revenge game for Alabama. For those players like Devontae, Jalen Waddell, Najee Harris... Maybe even Mac Jones. I know he didn't really play in that game. That was to his game. But he still was there. That screwed up Alabama's rest of the season. They didn't make uh, the playoff after that. They didn't even make a New Year's Six Bowl. They went on to play in the Citrus Bowl, I'm pretty sure, against Michigan. And they were able to win in that one. But it's still a revenge game, nonetheless. It's still one of the most exciting rivalries, in my opinion, in all of college football. I'm definitely going to be watching this game. I'm going to tune into it. Because just seeing, even though... You could have Vanderbilt suit up in LSU's uniforms and you could have Kentucky suit up in Alabama's uniforms. If I see that crimson and that purple and gold going at it, I'm going to watch the game. It's it's just a nice sight to see for your eyes just because you know the history and everything of the rivalry. It's just a good classic SEC football game watching these two teams play. So no matter who's playing in these uniforms, as long as there's purple and gold going out there against crimson and gray i'm gonna go watch the football game no question about it although alabama you look at the points scored per game alabama has 48.5 points that they've scored on average a game this is a team that just puts up they run up the scoreboard most explosive offensive team in my opinion all of college football mac jones has been playing some real good football this season 23 touchdowns for three interceptions for mac jones I don't even know who's going to be the starting quarterback for LSU in this game because LSU goes out against Texas A&M. They have a really rough game. 
They didn't play. I'm pretty sure TJ Finley, Finley was the starter, but then got pulled for Max Johnson. He came in. Finley threw like two interceptions in that one. And Max Johnson was the one who came in and threw the touchdown for LSU in that game. Whew, I've been talking for a while. I'm almost out of breath. I need to catch my breath for a second. Alabama, all in all, is a better football team in this game. No question about it. But there's the rivalry. There's going to be something to play for for this LSU team. It's a night game in Death Valley against Alabama. It doesn't get better than that in college football. I know that we're not going to have full capacity. Full capacity game, I think this game is different, even though LSU is nowhere near the team that they were last year. Obviously, I didn't know this at the beginning of the season, but when you lose guys like Joe Burrow, Clyde edwards Lair, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, uh, Thaddeus Moss, Caleb Von Chase on, Patrick Queen, uh, Grant Delpit, all those guys. Apparently, when you lose guys of that caliber, it makes a bit of a difference to your team. That's why you don't see LSU being undefeated and being the number one team in the country. That's why you see them at three and four in the SEC this season. Those guys are once in a generation talent. That's a once in a lifetime team that we saw last season from LSU. And they showed it. They made the most of it. If I'm an LSU fan, you you won a national championship last year. There's no, it, yeah, you have a bad season this year. Obviously, you never like to see your team playing bad, but you won a natty last year. You beat Alabama last year. You're going to have those bragging rights for that 2019 season for a while. Your year of having those bragging rights against Alabama that you won last year, I think that they're over, sadly. I really do think that they're over because even though this game is in Death Valley, it's a night game, it's a CBS game, going to be lost to play for, as I said. You're playing the Alabama Crimson Tide with an LSU team who has no identity right now on either side of the ball. They've just been, from the first game of the season, it's been a real struggle for LSU. I think the only bright spot of the season for LSU was they smack us against, they beat South Carolina pretty good. They beat us 54 to 20, 52 to 24. Who else has LSU beat? LSU has beat, ah, uh, who has LSU beat? I can't even remember. I have to go into the record because I can't even remember who LSU has really beat this season. LSU beat Arkansas. That was pretty much, I think that that was her best win because Arkansas has been playing pretty good football and they beat Vanderbilt. Not a strong resume at all from this LSU football team and a very strong resume for Alabama. Alabama's beat Georgia. Alabama's beat Texas A&M by a pretty good margin. Alabama has beat Ole Miss. I think that was the closest game Alabama's played all season because <laughs> Ole Miss played a very, very close game against them. Yeah, that was 63-48, a very high-scoring game. I watched that game. The game was a lot closer than the scoreboard says it was. Alabama beat Tennessee in a very convincing win. Alabama beat Mississippi State. Very convincing win. Alabama beat Kentucky. Very convincing win. Alabama beat Auburn last week. A very convincing win. Just convincing wins all over this resume. Alabama could drop a game, and they're still going to make the playoff, in my opinion. If they don't, I'm literally going to go to the playoff committee, and I'm going to go protest outside of their outside of their building or whatever because Alabama is a team that needs to be in the playoff I want the four best teams in the playoffs and if you're going to tell me that Alabama isn't one of those teams I just don't I don't know what to say to you because Alabama no question about it is one of the best teams if not the best team in my opinion they're the best team in all of college football they got that one next to their name for a reason they are a really really good football team Najee Harris best running back in all of college football Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith, before Jalen Waddle did go out in uh, that Tennessee game, he was probably the most explosive player in all of college football. Devontae Smith, nonetheless, he put up 171 yards in the game last week versus Auburn. He's a really, really good player. John Mechie, my boy from uh, Brampton, Ontario. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. He's out there from in Brampton. We're close. It's like a 45-minute drive or whatever. I love seeing Canadian players in college football, especially on Alabama, the best team in the nation. He's a baller. That kid can play. I want to put up his stats for a second because I want to look at these stats that John Mechie has been putting up this season. He's one of my favorite players in college football, no question about it. After all the South Carolina players, my favorite players in college football, you got like John Mechie, Seth Williams out of Auburn. I'm sorry, Alabama fans, that I had to put that in there. I love Seth Williams. Uh, Justin Fields, I'm a big Justin Fields fan. Love watching him play. He's a really fun player to go out and watch play football. Who else am I a big fan of? Uh, I don't know if I'd say Chuba because, yes, he is Canadian, 
they haven't really played. I haven't really watched a lot of Oklahoma State this year, if I'm going to be honest. But John Mechie, after all the South Carolina players, John Mechie is definitely one of my favorite players in college football. No question about it. Love that kid. He can play. Mac Jones, one of the best quarterbacks. He's playing one of the best. When I see, I've been looking at a lot of NFL draft analysis and everything, and like mock drafts and everything. Yes, you're going to have Trevor and then Justin Fields go too, but I have so many drafts that I've seen that have. Like, Trey Lance, no hit to him. I love him. He's a great player out of North Dakota State. You have, like, Zach Wilson, guys like that. I even saw, like, Kellen Mond and uh, who else was there? There's lots of – this quarterback draft is actually absolutely stacked this year. Lots of guys like that going out this year. I have seen them over Mac Jones and Kyle Trask, and I'm like, these guys are the two best quarterbacks in college football right now. Stat-wise, I know Trevor Lawrence is obviously going to be, even though I hate to say it because I'm a big Gamecocks fan, Trevor Lawrence is the number one quarterback in all of college football right now. Just player-wise, he's going to be the greatest player maybe ever to not win a Heisman. He's a good quarterback. He, he knows what he's doing. And it shows when Clemson doesn't have him, Clemson isn't as good as they are when they do have him. But I don't know. I just ran it off about, their, about how good Mac Jones is because I think – Filling the shoes of Tua, a quarterback like that, he's done an amazing job. And I have Alabama going to that national championship. Even though Alabama, I have a lot of people tell me that Alabama, like, I don't like seeing them win because they're in the national championship every single season. I'm kind of the opposite. I've kind of grown a love for Alabama just because they play Clemson in the national championship, it seems like, every year. And I hate Clemson with a passion so I always find myself cheering for Alabama Alabama is the only team that I really feel confident that can beat Clemson this year maybe Ohio State or something like that but so I naturally tend to cheer for Alabama in a ton of games I tend to like Alabama they're just a classic program I respect Nick Saban so much greatest uh, uh, football coach in all of college football of all time I respect the history of Bear Bryant Bryant at Dennis Denny Stadium is a great place the fans for Alabama, and I, I don't see any problem with them. They're not like Clemson fans. I can't stand Clemson fans. Oh, gosh. Don't get me started. We have a better rivalry between them. I know I could rant about Clemson all day long, but getting back to this Alabama-LSU game, Alabama's going to run over LSU's defense. Alabama's going to stop LSU, a very struggling offensive. LSU, uh, struggling offense for LSU. Alabama's defense is just going to run over all of them. They don't got a chance in this game, in my opinion. Even though it is a night game in Death Valley, I've said it again, anything could happen in this game. Anything can happen when you travel down to uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and go play a night game at Tiger Stadium in Death Valley. I still feel like Alabama's the way better team in this game, and I have Alabama, no question about it, in this game, and I have them moving to 9-0 and clinching that SEC West spot. So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it so much, guys. Definitely like the video down below. Comment anything about college football down below. I'd appreciate to hear from you guys. I love hearing from you guys. Like the video, subscribe, and definitely come back next time.